I, I have found that I have an affinity for the use of watercolor, and uh, um, it, uh, I've I worked with it enough that I uh, know the idiosyncrasies of it and how you can handle it to get results that you want, and the, with ex very, very few examples, I never use uh, white in the in paint. I use the white of the watercolor paper. Uh, I, I do a drawing on paper first with pencil, and I do my main concept and layout. And often I'll work from a small sketch, sometimes a slightly larger one. And then I put the um, uh, paper in a. I have a vat that I put it in, get it wet and leave it in for probably 15 or 20 minutes and take it out, put it on a painting board and uh, fasten it down just with tacks and then uh, begin painting on it right away and, I'll, and I can come back to it and if I want to lift out color I know how to do that and if I, I need to really take, it, uh, take out some that's that's dried and difficult, I'll use a, like a, an oil bristle brush maybe for that. And But I use it so that um, uh, it, it doesn't leave harsh lines or edges uh, that would not necessarily be typical of watercolor. But I don't use opaque paint in I don't mix the two. I mean, some artists do, you know, acrylic and whatever, but, but I don't. Watercolor will give you a picture of a texture, to put it real uh, simply. And uh, uh, both acrylic and oil, you have paint on, actual paint on the surface that has a a substance to it, whereas the watercolor is absorbed by the paper. I think uh, all of the uh, artistic uh, trends uh, uh, have some merit to them, so I just, uh, I, I really haven't uh, uh, copied or or been influenced directly by too many of them, any of them. Artists who um, who are supposedly famous and or whose work is expensive, that kind of thing, this has happened partly because uh, certain institutions or individuals perhaps have collected their work, so other people think that must be pretty good. I'll buy it, you see, or something like that, but that doesn't mean that it necessarily is. When Faye and I first, uh, uh, shortly after we moved to, to Washington, we came here in 1958, but 1962, Wanapum Dam was uh, about completed, and when it was scheduled to be completed, it would have flooded uh, six uh, sites uh, north of Vantage, from Vantage on north on the, on the west side of the Columbia, that w would have been complete, completely obliterated by that time. So I went down there and in a small boat, went up the river, and studied these petroglyphs and did some drawings of them. I did a few rubbings, although rubbings they don't want you to do, but they were going to be covered anyway, so I did some rubbings of them as well. They were done probably around um, uh, 900 AD, and uh, so I felt it was rather important to record these. Now I realize that they're not, uh, that isn't as creative a, an enterprise as doing like your own paintings. I recorded the, the imagery in 1962 for, for a lot of that, and then didn't really have time to paint them until 1994. 
So that was quite a time span. My, my parents had a farm and I did a lot of exploring as a child, as all youngsters will. We had a stream through our place, so I fished there and I did the usual things that kids do. We walked to school. Part of the time I rode a horse, that was elementary school. You know, it was like a one-room rural school. Well, I always um, uh, did a lot of drawing from the time I was a, a young uh, child, really. Although we didn't have art in the, in the schools I attended, uh, that probably influenced me some to continue to, to work in art. It's because of the variety in my painting, I don't feel that I should stay with any style or, or procedure per se, you know. And uh, if I decide to do some abstraction uh, and combine abstraction with uh, possibly uh, greater realism, I, I'm just free to do it.